Chase has spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy and undiagnosed, uncontrolled epilepsy. Suli takes nothing by mouth. She's nil by mouth. She used to eat. For her, it's been a downhill slide. She used to have anywhere from 100, 200 tonic-clonic seizures a day. They think she has some unknown regressive syndrome. They don't know what's wrong with her. Bella was diagnosed with a genetic epilepsy at the age of four. Um, it is called Dravet syndrome. My daughter Caitlin Spragan's eight years old and she's got 19 medical conditions ranging from plagiocephaly, macrocephaly, communicating hydrocephalus, esophagus dysmotility, tracheomalacia, scoliosis, hypotonia, global developmental delay, obstructive sleep apnea with hyperventilation and the major one being refractory epilepsy. Caitlin first started on Mulloway's medical cannabis and she's been on that for just over two years now. Um, that was working to reduce her seizures and as a seizure rescue med. Caitlin got used to the medication and it still reduces her seizures but it will not stop a seizure. So I am now sourcing another product on top of Mulloway's which is Jenny Hallam's FECO and that's the only medicine I've found to stop my daughter's seizures where I don't have to give my daughter CPR. Starting the cannabis, it's just like, I can see his eyes. Like, you look at him and you can just see this little soul looking back at you trying to talk. Um, I poke my tongue out, he copies a lot. Um, you know, he's, he's starting to squeeze my hand a bit more. Uh, I just feel that, I can feel his presence now. For us, Suli's in a better place because she's not having 100 or 200 seizures a day. She might have one seizure a day or 10 seizures a day, or one seizure a week. Um, it depends on how, she, how her health is at the time. So she's in a far better place on the cannabis than what she was. So I've basically been dropping her medications myself using cannabis oil, and she's had like significant gains in cognitive ability and energy levels and health. Every seizure that my daughter or any child has can be their last seizure because seizures can kill a child. Epilepsy can kill. Caitlin's real high prioritised. She is a lot better now being on cannabis medicine, but beforehand, I can't take my eyes off my daughter. She can sit there and smile one minute, two seconds later she'll be blue and not breathing. There's no warning, especially with her seizures. I had no other option, like I'm watching my son's seizure, they told me there's no more meds for him, there's nothing more we can do, you know, I got told to plan a funeral for him two years ago. I don't think I'm a criminal whatsoever, um, you know, I felt more of a criminal pushing non-FDA approved medication in my son than I do now. Um, I, I can go out and about into the, the community and not feel like my son's going to die within a second if he has a seizure because his medication, pharmaceutical medication never worked, it never did anything. He just seizure and knock himself out. Um, so I don't think I'm a criminal whatsoever, I believe that I'm saving my child. It is against the law, we realise that. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> there's a bigger issue than what's against the law or what's not against the law, and there's a moral issue. And the moral issue is, is um, even though we're breaking the law, we don't think we're criminals because I don't think it's a criminal act to save your child. What I'm doing is against the law. I'm classified as a criminal, but in my eyes, I don't see myself as a criminal. I'm saving my daughter's life, and I'll keep breaking the law to save my daughter's life. It is not legal. It is not. People are living in fear. I have been, I have been terrified um, of living with this because you never know who's going to dob you in. The school even said to me this year, um, we, we can't assure you that we won't, that nobody will dob you in. The detail is, that basically the law about cannabis in New South Wales and every other state, the law about cannabis is the same as it was 12 months ago, five years ago. That is, it is a criminal offence to possess cannabis. It's a criminal offence to use cannabis. It's a criminal offence to supply cannabis. A criminal offence to grow cannabis. Whether it's for medicinal purposes or to get stoned and have a bit of trippy fun, whatever, um, it's illegal. I'm very much in favour of medical cannabis as a 
a, a variety of uh, conditions and medical um, problems can be addressed from what I can tell. I'm not a doctor, it's not my field, but from what I know from talking to lots and lots of people over the recent years, it works for a whole lot of people and unfortunately the legal situation hasn't quite caught up with the community in terms of the interest that there is in accessing those products awfully. Uh, basically, medical cannabis is uh, a human right. Um, we need to take back the right to choose what medicines we put into our bodies and that right's been taken away. What both the Federal and New South Wales governments have done is take some what I think are very, very baby steps towards legalising medicinal cannabis. They've created a structure, a framework, where people who are wanting to produce medicinal cannabis products can apply for licences. They've created a structure where people who are patients or wanting to use the product or products um, for medicinal reasons can apply through their doctor for prescription. The doctor has to go through an enormously complicated rigmarole to get permission to prescribe. So we're still very much stuck in that medical model of thinking about medicinal cannabis as only something that can be provided by a doctor, with the government giving approval to the doctor on a case-by-case -case basis, with a process that takes probably 12 months or more. Haven't yet seen anybody get through the process as far as I know. So 12 months or more of procedure to get an individual person access to, to a product. My view is we could have a much more um, relaxed approach to medicinal cannabis and have a much more open process where people can, in a, in a realistic basis, access medicinal cannabis, tinctures and oils and so on for uh, safely and appropriately through a, a legal process that would be much less complicated than, than it is at the moment. The legislation as, as it stands on medical cannabis is um, bullshit really. Um, there's no a lot way to say it. Um, they have made a dog's breakfast or something that should have been incredibly simple. I think what we need to have uh, to accept is that cannabis works for a lot of people. Trying to make it too elaborately structured in terms of managing access or controlling access I think is not in the best interest of people who are using cannabis medicinally. The uh, I'm not so my whole view though about cannabis laws is perhaps not the same as other people's I think they're generally the cannabis laws should be relaxed so that uh, people should be able to grow cannabis or smoke cannabis for recreation so-called recreational purposes as well but even if we're just limiting it to medicinal purposes you we could have a legal arrangement where it was a legal defense to if other laws stayed in place a legal defense for people to say uh, uh, sorry for people who are using cannabis medicinally to not be guilty of offenses just on the basis of, of keeping it to municipal places only. Uh, that would be not a difficult law to, to pass. It would not cause a floodgates problem in terms of everybody using cannabis, pretending they've got cancer or pretending they've got some other condition. Uh, and it would, the result would be that people would be able to lawfully access cannabis products, which they are doing anyway. They're tens of thousands, really. The number of people who are using cannabis products these days is um, very, a very large number. No one really knows. I, I would suspect tens of thousands of people across the country across Australia are using it. Uh, those people are not a risk to society, are not a risk to civilization. There are people and their friends and, and family who are attempting to do the right thing by sick people and it's about time the government caught up with that and passed some very simple laws to allow legal exemptions from the general criminal law for people in that situation. It's a herb, you know. I mean, we can grow uh, datura, we can grow foxglove, we can grow belladonna. Um, it's quite legal and oleander that can kill people and we're allowed to grow those in our garden so why the hell aren't we allowed to grow a plant that can't kill anyone? Um, we can buy paracetamol and aspirin and ibuprofen at the supermarket with no regulation whatsoever. All of those drugs cause deaths every year. Um, cannabis doesn't. I think the government's approach should be to first of all concentrate on relieving that humanitarian need and dealing with it on a compassionate basis. Everyone, politicians use the term compassion, but they don't seem to remember what the dictionary definition of compassion is. When is this madness going to stop? You know, this, the people need this medicine, and they don't need it in three months or six months. They need it now, tomorrow. And that could be done with the stroke of a pen. And we have a government that refuses to acknowledge that. The uh, use of cannabis, possession of cannabis, for whatever reason, remains illegal. So unless you're on the terminal illness scheme, unless you've got a, a, a terminal illness and you've registered your condition with the New South Wales Police, 
you are likely to be arrested and charged, if the police come across you, uh, uh, likely to be arrested and charged with possession or supply or, or cultivation offences, depending on the situation. You don't have to worry about killing your patient. It's a very comforting thing for a doctor, not to have to worry that they're going to kill their patient. I think it's marvellous. So cannabis should be treated as a first-line medicine. And if it fails, then we have a whole world of pharmaceutics to fall back on. And it will fail, it won't work for everybody. It's, no one's ever said it's a panacea or a cure-all or whatever. Um, so, you know, there's really, there's, uh, there is enough room for cannabis in the pharmaceutical industry, but they want to control it all. And therein lies the problem, that's the bottom line. The, the focus should really be on providing or allowing access to adequate treatment rather than trying to penalise people in the context of a law that really doesn't make a lot of sense anyway about the general use of cannabis. There is no way to measure, I don't think, the cost of alcohol as compared to cannabis. It's just so much greater that it's extraordinary. I, it's a, an extraordinary indictment of our society that that drug is legal and the one that can't kill you is illegal. All you can do is imagine how awful it must be for a parent to see a child with epilepsy having 50, 100 fits a day, knowing that the conventional medicine isn't working. Um, all you can do is, is have nothing but, but compassion and sympathy for those parents. If cannabis works, I'm a parent, I'd be having no hesitation in using cannabis products that work. That's not to say it's going to work for everybody, and of course parents and anyone needs to be careful about the things they put into their body, of course. That's part of the responsibility we all have, isn't it, as, as, as adults, and as parents we have responsibility to look after our kids. But certainly there's a whole lot of evidence that for a lot of um, uh, childhood conditions, like epilepsy in particular, that cannabis works when other products don't, other, medic other medicine doesn't, and the legal situation unfortunately hasn't caught up with that yet. My advice to parents would be, do what's right for your kids, worry about the legal consequences later, um, chances are you won't get caught by the police anyway, but if there is a legal consequence, worry about that later, that's a second issue, a second order issue, the main thing is look after your kids, look after your family, do the right thing. In order to, for there to have been a crime committed, there needs to be a victim. Where are the victims? The victims are now those that are deprived of their oil. So who's actually committed the crime? What cannabis and alcohol have in common is that they are both widely used in the community. They're used for, uh, for most people who use, who have a, a beer or two, or have a, 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 a joint or two, uh, do that at some level to relax, to, um, uh, I suppose, deal with the, 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 the pressures of modern life. And whether it's a glass of scotch at the end of a busy day or a joint at the end of a busy day, the same social result is, it's a little bit of release, a little bit of, um, uh, of relaxation. It, for most people, it causes no harm at all to the wider community, and there should be no law in place that says you can't have a beer, and there should be no law in place that says you can't smoke a joint. Who's it actually potentially harming? You know, only the pharmaceutical company's chances of taking control in the industry. You know, it's not harming the child. You know, this is the thing. And it's the same as that, um, it's, this is what we have to keep coming back to. It cannot kill you. <laughs> like, how many times does this have to be drummed into politicians' heads, into the general public's heads? It is the safest medicine we have on earth. I've asked for amnesty so a lot of times, and I can understand what they say when they say we cannot give you amnesty to break the law. So, change the law. If the government can't give me amnesty, they may as well hand me a death certificate because that's what they're basically doing. I feel that we need amnesty for our children and our family and all other families like us. I mean, wouldn't you call for an amnesty if you really found that something's helping your child? Wouldn't you want the people to hear? It's not just for Caitlin. There's millions of kids out there suffering and adults. We, we just need it legalised and it, we can't wait. We really can't. Um, I think medical cannabis is a great idea and it should be legalised obviously everywhere. What I heard, it's said that it's going to help the uh, people get cure from like cancer. I've heard a lot of things about medical cannabis and I'd have to say I'm really for it. I would really like to see that happen. I'm all for it. I have had knee replacements, a lot of pain. Uh, I did see the doctor yesterday in regards to it and it's told various stories but it has been legalised but still hasn't been worked out 
how they're going to distribute it. You know. I'm, I'm all for. I'm all for it. I um, I've done some research on it, and um, I've seen the effects, the good effects it does to for children with seizures, um, people in pain. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's a, it's a really good thing that's been held back by the government for way too long. I think medical cannabis is good, you know, for people that need it. Like if it's going to save lives, then why not? Yeah. Um, well, my opinion on medical cannabis is I think it's been a long time coming. Should have, you know, I, I lived in America for about ten years back in the nineties and seemed to be under the uh, on the on the radar there, but under the radar, so to speak, it was. It was used there back in the 90s and I think it worked really well. I mean, just seeing some of the results lately with that, some of those young kids with some of those um, some of those diseases that they've got, I think it really helps. I think it really could well, yeah. Opinion on medical cannabis is that I think it should be legalised, for, especially for medicinal purposes, for uh, pain, for cancer patients. We've had uh, family members die of cancer and it is just the most horrible disease and if they can be pain free of it through this medicinal cannabis. Also seen children having epileptic fits, with, you know, cannabis oil um, should be legalised as well. So yeah, no, I'm all for it. I have no contact with cannabis, but I still feel like it's a, you know, it's a tradition. Sometimes it's from the very beginning of the medical process, medical history, it is used as some kind of treatment to relieve the pain. So I think it is, if it is under control, it could be good. Uh, I think it would help uh, patients immensely. Having worked with oncology patients for quite a number of years, I've seen the suffering and everything the, just the being bound in bed with chemo inside them, I think this would help such an awful lot. I've seen a lot of misery and that and I think this would help. Pain covers all ages. So it doesn't matter whether you're a, a child or an aged person, you, you suffer pain. You need to have some sort of relief, yeah. I think medical cannabis should have been legalised years ago. Um, before I jumped the shark and went into politics, I think my last story for the Sunday night program on the Seven Network was about um, uh, medicinal cannabis and cannabis oil and the cases where people we talked to, people, parents being arrested and charged because they were buying or producing themselves um, marijuana plants for cannabis oil for their kids, for their epileptic kids, for the kids who are having seizures like you wouldn't believe. And, uh, and we, I, we had cases where, where a young mother telling me that her, her daughter had suddenly had 1,100 seizures and now didn't have any. It was this extraordinary stuff. I have about 150 families with um, their kids have um, Tourette's syndrome or, you know, they suffer from seizures, autism, uh, things like that. Um, there's about 150 families. Some of them have two and even three kids with the same problems. Um, but the seizures, they don't have seizures anymore um, or anything. And I probably look after about 100 or so um, people with brain, you know, cancers, brain tumours, um, things like that. Uh, usually inoperable stuff, you know. They're not isolated cases. Like we've been buried under an avalanche of needy patients. Right? It's sad that we can only get to a fraction of the people that approach us. The stuff that our government's allowing in is twice and three times the price what you can get it off the black market for. Now that's the government allowing something to come into the country that's three times the price you can get it off the black market. Who in the hell is going to use it? When we support a young child with epilepsy, it costs the parents approximately $150 a month. For a similar product imported through pharmaceutical avenues, it's $1,500 a month, right? They're gouging at the sick and needy. I've got, you know, literally thousands and thousands of people on a waiting list, you know, it's, um, yeah. I can only look after a couple hundred people at a time. Last year's um, uh, Mardi Gras had a mother with a baby who's, who has improved incredibly since she started having access to the oil. The parents get their family life back. 
the siblings aren't any more sidelined by the disease, but it becomes a functional family again. The level of stress is just like you know, air out of a balloon, it just lets down, you can just feel the, the stress going down. It's transformational, not only for the patient, the siblings and the parents and then the larger society. Transformational, as I can say. We've had people suffer daily pain for 11 years and be cured within five days of starting cannabis for neuropathic pain, right? We see that often. And they're suffering horrendous side effects and expenses from allopathic treatments, and it can just be blown away by the right medicine. A few of the mothers and that have come up to me since I've been up here. They start crying and everything in the street, you know, um, telling me how happy they are to meet me and everything, you know. I don't know what, and what I've done for their families and that, you know. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference, you know. It's, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's like a lot of mothers have said to me, it's not that they've got their kid back, they finally have their kid, you know. They've never had it before, and now they have a kid, so, um, you know. I suppose that'll make a difference, wouldn't it, you know. The government opposed home growing because it's the antithesis of uh, the reason they brought the prohibition in in the first place. It basically empowers the people, right? it disempowers the corporation, it provides a very strong price counterbalance against corporate greed. So what's changed? You know, if somebody can say, well, I, I get access to it now because of what the government's done, and right here, fine. Um, but as far as I know, there's 20 odd people that access this stuff that costs them $140 a day through the government to access. And there's 20 people in the country that access. Now I have a waiting list of thousands of people. Wouldn't they access that if it was possible? At least try and, uh, for starters, as a stopgap, uh, decriminalise it. I mean, it's just, it is, it is crazy. When the police come, it, they realised that it was um, people's medicines they were taking. It wasn't plants. You know, I think the police at the time realised what was happening, you know, and what they'd done. It wasn't a, um, you know, where they were busting some big illegal syndicate or anything, you know. Um, everything was being recorded. It was all going to genuine sick people. Um, I kept all the information for them people, of them people and everything, and um, I just basically grew the plants to help the people that um, can't help themselves, you know, can't do it themselves. Sometimes too, people derive a huge amount, especially wheelchair bound people, things like that, other forms of physical disability, engaging in the growing process, having their own tent, having a daily activity while they watch their medicine grow and then process it through, is by itself a therapeutic activity. I look after over 150 families with kids with um, Dravet syndrome and that. Um, if I was to stop giving it to them, we could have a massive death of kids. Um, so no, I won't stop. The next seizure these kids have, because they haven't had them for years, could kill them. You know? Well, the very next seizure they were going to have could have been the one that killed, was going to kill them. We don't know. But we do know that sooner or later they were going to die from having seizures. That's how it happens, and they usually live to about 10. You know, well, I've got them over 13 now, and they're coming off the medicines and that. Well, they're not even needing the tinctures anymore. And they've gone from having thousands of seizures in a day to none, you know, for four or five years. It's a no-brainer, and I just can't understand why more governments haven't embraced it and more heavily. In terms of beginning to recognize that cannabis is a medicine, we're basically reinventing pharmacy here. We're reinventing medicine, and I also think we're reinventing humanity. And NIFID is really ground zero for reinventing humanity, for being decent to people, for enjoying the benefits of cannabis, whether it's recreational and medicinal. I became involved with cannabis oil um, because I needed it myself. I have um, a serious um, body-wide chronic pain and um, nerve damage um, issue. Uh, I have a resting pain level of about 6 out of 10 every day. I was using um, morphine for probably about 15 years as well as oxycodone and uh, Lyrica and those sort of things. Um, and I was getting sicker and sicker from it. I got down to about 38 kilos before I started just using cannabis by itself. Um, then I discovered the cannabis oil and that helped me get off of all of those medications and now I just use cannabis oil alone. Well it changed my life, it saved my life. Um, when I was on the other medications there were horrible side effects to them. Um, I used to scratch my skin off um, because it was, uh, it was so itchy. Um, I used to get terrible um, stomach problems from it and, um, and it was just, it was a horrible drug. So the cannabis oil doesn't have any of those side effects, it doesn't have any side effects whatsoever. Um, I can have a virtually normal life using it um, other than the problems with the law.
I started helping other people because they saw what it was doing for me and they asked what I was doing and I told them I was using cannabis oil and they asked whether it might help for them and, and I said well I, I thought it probably would so um, I started sharing it with other people and, um, and it worked for them and then their friends would ask them and, and their family would ask them and, and they would tell them what they were using and then they would ask if they could get some as well and, and it sort of went from there so it was really word of mouth at the beginning. Jenny Hallam, I've been sourcing her cannabis medicine going on, would be about eight months now, and it's working marvellous for my daughter. Jenny Hallam was raided back in January this year by the South Australian police, and they basically took everything. I had a phone call from Jenny that day to say, please don't, um, you have to reduce the oil until I can get back up up and running again. January the 4th of this year, police raided my home. Um, they came in, I warned them at the door that I was, um, that there was cannabis and cannabis oil on the premises, that I was making oil um, for people that were sick and dying and that anything that they took that day could result in somebody's death. Um, I told them that before they walked in the door and they still came in, they still took cannabis and they still took cannabis oil. So um, on the day I wasn't arrested or charged, they just um, seized the, the oil and the cannabis. Yeah, our supply is, um, how can I put it, um, very unreliable at the moment because we, we, we were getting it from Jenny Hallam who was recently raided this year and um, who's currently going to court so we're not sure what's going to happen. Most of the people that I'm helping have contacted me. Um, they're all very worried about me um, and how I'm coping but they're also extremely worried about their supply um, and whether or not they'll be able to still keep getting that supply and whether or not their lives are at stake or at risk. She's a lovely lady and I don't believe anything like that should be happening to her and the way she's healing people. It's, we call it our healers, not our suppliers. Um, they heal our kids. No, they're the one people that are ready to stand up and then go to jail for it. My charges were um, both for possession and supply, which carries a penalty of two years, um, but the, um, the more important one was the um, manufacture charge, which is a major indictable offence and carries a penalty of up to seven years, which is considered a life sentence. So with the two combined, it could be nine years. She may be breaking the law, but I don't think she's wrong. And I think, I think they're wrong in targeting her because um, what they're doing could cause or contribute to the death of my daughter. My name's Karen Burge from the Church of Ubuntu in Newcastle. I'm the co-vice-president um, of, of the Church of Ubuntu in Newcastle. Um, approximately three years ago I witnessed a three-year-old boy named Oscar go from 1,500 seizures one day to five the next uh, after a capsule of medicinal cannabis. And that was the day that I decided to dedicate my life to cannabis. We can get up to 100 um, calls for assistance each week. The phones are ringing off the hook. It's really sad to watch parents um, fearful of trying cannabis um, and because it's illegal. And it's so sad that they're choosing, you know, every seizure is like being punched in the head. Um, so if they're choosing to have their children continually be punched in the head because they don't believe that they can do something, use a plant, which is really crazy. Does that, yeah, that's how crazy it is. Every politician needs to spend a day in the life of a child with epilepsy. And the, the scream you hear is sort of like a, it's something that never leaves you. Once you hear it, you can't forget it. Doesn't get out, it keeps ringing in your head. And I can best describe it probably as terror. They're in terror, they're like, their body's spasming, they've got absolutely no control about, of what's going on with these electrical currents running through their body. And they're te petrified. And their family are petrified. And a lot of their parent families are separated. A lot of them are single parents because there's too much pressure and there's just so many different variables, you know, for the child. There's so many different, um, challenges for the family it's it's a really yeah they really need help yeah really really need help all of them now it's critical we know that it works just let us do what we do and we'll be done yeah it just gives you more fuel every time you see a child die there's another log of passion like Dan Haslam Rumor Rose Ocean 
Kisco in Western Australia. Um, all the children that have been, this is about um, all the children that have been forced into um, the pharmaceutical medicine that is causing more harm than good. We were raided on the 1st of December 2017-16. Um, they took 215 plants and they were for, we have 100 children that we're supporting with epilepsy. So those 215 plants would have been um, two plants for each child which would have been medicine for probably about um, 12 months. I know it's the right thing, but um, um, it causes a lot of distraction in my life when I just, um, I'd just rather be left alone to assist the people that have come to us for help. It's not legal. Like, they say it's a legal form for synthetic, what the government want to sell off to us, yet again, to make their profits. Um, it's unfair to tell the public that, that you can get it when you can't. Um, families are struggling still and now we feel that the community think we're liars or we're lazy parents that don't take our kid to the doctors to get him get cannabis for him when we want to go to the black market. Like, it's not fair. Um, the government need to come out and tell the public what is really happening and why we can't get it and why our kids are dying still and why we're being labelled criminals when you know, they're allowed to have a doctor in a white coat give it, but if a parent has it from a plant growing from the ground and we're criminals, like, it doesn't make sense anymore. I've been told it's legal, but all the headlines in the papers, all over the media, it's, it's all just lies. They say you can go to your local doctor and get a prescription to be get, get it imported. It's all just lies. There is hardly no doctors who will write out a script to import it. People think it is and they say, oh, well, they should shut up now because they've got their legal cannabis, but it's, it's, it's not, not the issue at all. Um, doctors definitely should have stood up, like my doctor, who I tried to educate two years ago, they should have stood up by now, they should have looked at it, they should have known that in other countries they use it, um, that, you know, if we're in such a subgroup of people, the Dravet syndrome, you know, they should be educating themselves earlier uh, and providing us with the best medical treatment. If they say they're a super hospital, they should have the super best therapies for our children, not have us go and have to investigate ourselves and then when we do and we try to bring it to them and even to the point where we ask the health minister to get involved to, to provide that because they're not, still not doing it. Um, so I think that the doctor should be freed up to be allowed to help us um, more, that, that it is a lot of government bureaucracy stopping medical treatment of people. The product might be illegal but it's keeping their child alive so they basically can say, I'll use a, an illegal product for now, because if I don't, if I wait for the legal product, my child won't be here to need that legal product. So it's all well and good to say, wait, wait for the legal product, don't use an illegal product. But when you don't have time to wait, you, that's, that's not a choice. You, you have to do what you have to do. And the people that are using my product and my oils know that it's a safe product. They know that it's a good product. And so they would rather risk having a product off the black market than waiting and having a dead child. You've got people doing media, people doing protests, all sorts of things happening. And there's been so much media about it. And yet, ultimately, we've gained nothing. We still can't get a product. We still can't get anything. And the media, you'll see a media release saying, ah, oh, Headlines, cannabis legalised. Well, it's not actually legalised. There's a, they've created a legal pathway, but we can't, we can't go that pathway because we, we can't afford it or you can't get a specialist to help you or it's just made, it, it's made virtually impossible. We think it's all just smoke and mirrors. Um, you know, they say that it's legal, but it's like dangling this carrot in front of people that they just keep pulling away at the last minute. Um, if it was legal, people wouldn't still be accessing um, an illegal supply. They wouldn't be risking their um, lives, their freedom, their families. 
uh, for something that they didn't absolutely have to do. So um, this talk that it's legal, that it's available, it's just, it's all crap basically. And, and we're tired of, of being um, manipulated by the government. We're tired of um, them offering things to the people that are standing up making all the noise. So the families that are in the media that you know have stood up and, and said that they're using cannabis, um, they're the ones that are offered these special little deals, um, but not everybody else. So we're not happy about it. We're not happy about the way the government's dealt with things. Um, and we don't think it's acceptable the way that they're not listening to us and what we want. We need an immediate, am immediate amnesty um, for the people that are using it so they can use it without fear. Um, and that's the one thing that they just won't give us and we can't understand why not. They've given a gun amnesty in the past. Why can't they give an amnesty to save people's lives? A lot of research needs to be done on this and we do need to get doctors on board and I understand why they have to have the trials. But let us mothers who've been doing this for two years allow us to still do it and just help like help us if we have to come to emergency, help us, don't make us into criminals. The main reason why I have been arguing and been asking for amnesty is it would make a big difference to Caitlin. And it's not just for hospital admissions. My daughter would be able to attend school. The teachers would be able to administer the cannabis medicine. And my daughter would be able to interact and socialise with other kids and try to have an education. Because at the moment, she, we're refused an education. Before when my son was on pharmaceutical medications, he would never look in your eyes or would be rarely and when he did, it would he would probably have a seizure five minutes later because it was just too much stimulation for him to even try and focus on you. Um, he was asleep, I was watching my son pass away on the couch, um, he wouldn't move, uh, you know, even his six-year-old sister just sat there and gave up. You could see she used to play with him all the time and then she just realised she couldn't do anything with him so she stopped. Um, I had to slow down his um, physio because he couldn't have too much physio because it was just too much for him. He'd seizure straight away. I feel felt lost six months ago. I felt depressed and upset um, but I was happy and I never knew why I felt upset. Like I was happy I had my family. I still have my son which is a blessing but I, I come to the conclusion that I feel that I was upset and depressed because I was watching my son and I feel like I was getting his vibe of death. Um, it was upsetting to feel, it was a cold feeling. You know, you just you couldn't get any contact. You know, he couldn't hold you, he would just flop. Um, but now, you know, I can hug him and he, he can see him smelling me. So it's crazy, real crazy. And this is why I'll fight to death to keep my son in cannabis and he will never have pharmaceutical meds again because no one ever decided to check if he was allergic to these medications, which I have, and now I've got proof that he's like, he can't filter any of this through him. That's why he ended up having so many seizures. Um, so, yeah, having our son wake and even his six-year-old daughter, uh, my six-year-old daughter says it, you know, it's good that we're seeing Chase wake, Mum, like, this medicine works. So it's, it's, we do more with him, you know, we can do so much more with him now and it's, it's brought our family back, not just him. Nothing at this point has hurt my daughter using cannabis. In fact, I feel like I've saved her life because the amounts of medication she was on when she was eight before I started were enormous. And had I continued down the path of him adding more in there, which they would do, um, I don't know if she'd be alive because the cannabis, they, get a, they can get a good sleep they can get seizure control, they can get, they can speak, they can sing, they can be happy. Um, they can forget the trauma as well. Before Caitlin went on cannabis medicine, she was a vegetable in her wheelchair. She couldn't eye gaze, she couldn't communicate, she couldn't hold anything in her hand. She, she, she basically couldn't do anything. She wouldn't follow you with her eyes, she wouldn't do anything. And since being on cannabis medicine, She's listening. She's, she, my daughter's alive. For the first time ever since going on cannabis medicine, we found my daughter alive. And it wasn't just me who noticed it. The school teachers noticed it. The doctors noticed it. I had my 85-year-old grandmother arguing with me, do not put your daughter on cannabis, Katrina. I don't want Caitlin on cannabis. After three days of going, putting Caitlin on cannabis medicine, my grandmother turned around and said it's the best thing I could have ever done for Caitlin. Oh, we thought it was amazing. Honestly, um, not only for us, like it made our life easier. Like I said, that we're actually contemplating one of us going back to work because she wasn't going to hospital, she wasn't sick anymore. 
she was going along really well and um, we were amazed at the result. It was actually a better result than we'd hoped for. It was, yeah. We, she also had a brain lesion that they were monitoring every six months by MRI, um, a lesion in a brain that was slowly growing, which disappeared. Um, the hospital, the hospital says there's no evidence that it was the cannabis, but there's no evidence that it wasn't either. So, is all we know is on, after eight months on the cannabis oil, that brain lesion disappeared. The effects that I've seen, the positive effects I've seen from cannabis use and cannabis oil um, are amazing, nothing short of almost miraculous. Um, I've seen children with epilepsy having hundreds of seizures a day down to nothing. Um, I've seen children with epilepsy that were basically reduced to a vegetable, um, coming back and interacting with their families again and going back to school and learning and picking up a book and reading it. Um, I've seen um, MS patients who basically couldn't even wa uh, wa work anymore and, and um, you know, were, were basically reduced to just a, a dribbling mess on the couch, um, up and active again and, and going back to work. Um, I've seen cancer patients who had um, cancer, diagnosed cancers, completely gone. In fact, this week alone um, I've had news from two different people that I've been helping. Um, one is a, a little 13-year-old um, girl with a brain tumour. Um, her tumour has liquefied and um, basically has been told that it's it's now um, it's not active anymore. Um, and then another lady with um, uh, breast cancer who has also been told that she's clear of cancer. So um, just in one week, um, two um, stories of cancers that are basically gone. Um, I've seen people in chronic pain um, that were um, unable to do anything that are now um, having active lives again. Um, the, the difference is amazing. It is truly amazing and is exactly why I do it and is the reason why people risk their um, freedom um, to take it. I'm not worried about going to jail. I'm worried about my son being taken. It's still the fear aspect. It's still the fact that you're still out there in the community and anybody can report you. Um, and docs turning up was quite like, you know, I, I pride myself on being the best mum. I have four children and I'm an overachiever. Um, so to have that was just, it's just, it's, it, the, the conflict and the, is, it, it does your head in. We were reported to docs in um, June, July in 2015. And Doc said to put it on her medical record. So we've been reported to Doc's. The future for Chase with Doc's, um, I'm a bit worried. Like I know 100% I care for my son with every bit of my heart and soul. I give him everything he needs. I give him the love he needs. I understand him. You know, I give him the time to understand him. Um, but I believe that our system isn't approving me healing my son. I think it's disgusting that child services are actually considering taking children away from parents that are using cannabis oil for their children. Um, they are trying to save their children's lives. Most of these parents have been told by doctors that there's nothing else that they can do. To take their children home, um, to let them die peacefully, um, basically there's nothing else we can do. So for these parents, they are doing basically the only thing that they know to save their kids' lives. They are doing something that they don't want to do. They don't take this decision lightly. They don't take the decision to break the law, you know, lightly. It's something that they agonise over and is very hard for them to do. And, and they shouldn't be put in this position. Another parent, a friend of mine, Jason David, he has a dispensary in California and um, hundreds of children go there with children like Bella and they're able to reverse and get them off pharmaceuticals there. So they've been doing that now for two years and here I am and we've got nowhere. Yeah, I, I've tried it, I've tried using cannabis and getting it down and I've asked for medical help. I've told them about my friends, nobody seems to care. So the GP said the legislation is putting more regulations on cannabis than any other drug, like morphine or whatever. He can write a prescription out for morphine and there's no questions. I, I've been told by the government within a a month to two months, there'll be growers here and I'll be able to get a THC product here. Do you think I really can believe them when all they have done is lied to me about the product they've offered me? No, I don't believe them. I, I've lost faith in the hospital system and the Queensland government. They don't care. I had a meeting with the Queensland Premier on 20th of January this year. Um, at that meeting, <coughs> the Premier offered me access to a legal product. They said they would test the product we're using um, to find out the ratios of CBD and THC. 
they would source a similar product from Canada, Tilray in Canada, and that it would be provided free of charge for the rest of my daughter's life on a compassionate basis. We've tried and it's all eventuated to nothing. I have been moved by the stories of families with young children with epilepsy suffering life-threatening seizures and what they have to go through on a daily basis. Today marks another milestone for those who have campaigned tirelessly for changes that will allow access to medicinal cannabis. The Minister for Health will introduce into the Parliament today the Public Health Medicinal Cannabis Bill 2016. Yeah. My government has listened to the many points of view on this issue, including from the parents of children with treatment-resistant conditions who stand to benefit from this legislation. That is why we have collaborated closely with New South Wales, Victoria and the Commonwealth. Mr Speaker, this legislation will provide a transparent and robust regulatory framework to manage access to medicinal cannabis. It has been informed by consultation with medical specialists and stakeholder groups, hospital and health services and, importantly, members of the public and potential recipients. Cons consultation feedback was overwhelmingly supportive of the government's access scheme. Mr Speaker, let me be very clear that this is in no way a green light for the recreational use of cannabis, nor for people to grow their own cannabis, even if for therapeutic use. These activities remain offences under the Drugs Misuse Act 1986. However, the lawful production of medicinal cannabis does present an opportunity for Queensland businesses to supply goods to this expanding market. My government is working closely with industry representatives to assist them to participate in the Commonwealth's licensing scheme for cultivation and manufacture of medicinal cannabis. I think the government is trying to control it so strictly um, because they want to control the supply and I think they want to control the supply and direct it to the pharmaceutical companies because I think the pharmaceutical companies are putting pressure on them to make it the way that they want it. So if the pharmaceutical companies can't profit out of it, they don't want us to be able to have it. Basically, pharmaceutical companies don't want us well because there's no profit in well people. They profit when we're sick. So if we start using cannabis oil, we'll get better and then they'll lose the money. So unless they can find a way to profit out of it themselves, they won't really want us to be able to access it and they'll do anything they can to make sure that doesn't happen. The government need to wake up and realise this medicine works. Why, why do we need to class it as a scheduled aid or scheduled whatever drug? The medicine works. It's a natural plant what grows in the ground. How, how can you say it is that bad? There is no one has ever died from cannabis medicine. No one has ever died from cannabis alone. What I care about is my daughter and others like her who need a medicinal cannabis product. Now, if the government cannot provide something that's accessible and affordable, well, then something has to be done or let us make our own or, or let us, why not let us, why can't the government approve it, test it for safety? Like the product we're using now. I've put it to the government so many times, why can't we get some form of approval for us to be able to use the product we're using in the hospital and in the school until there's an affordable and accessible local product made. Now, they can test it for safety if, they, if they're worried about safety. They can test it for safety. So they, it does my head in because there's no logical, sane reason for not letting us use what we're using when for two years there has not been one adverse side effect and only a benefit but we're told, no, it's illegal. Well, it is illegal, but change the law. Laws can be changed. Governments do it every day. I've asked the government to test my oil. I've asked the government to put me in a lab and let me work for them and let me create a supply until a legal supply is available. The government doesn't want to do that. You know, I spend a lot of time with these politicians and speaking with these top politicians, and, and most of them, you can see, are affected by what's happening and, and by what they've heard but they still don't do anything about it. They're still not doing anything solidly about it. You know, we've got a few odd um, politicians around the place that are working their backsides off and that are trying to push things through, but that's not enough. We need everybody's support. And when, you know, we have politicians that say, oh yes, we support it, but then they're not really supporting it when it comes to actually pushing these bills through parliament, then we have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? And, and that's something that we don't understand either as, you know, cannabis activists and, and campaigners. We don't understand why it's taking so long. We don't understand why 
we are having to fight so hard to save people's lives. It shouldn't be this hard. So we would like to know from the government ourselves, why is this taking so long? They talk about they don't have enough evidence, enough clinical evidence on whether it works, the safety of cannabis or whatever, but there's evidence out there in, in Israel, in Canada, in America, <clears throat> but they say there's no evidence in Australia. Well, they will use evidence from other countries to try and discredit cannabis, but they won't use the evidence from other countries to try and give it credit. I, 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 seriously, I just, I can't understand, I can understand that it's all about profit um, and the government now are all, you know, trying to make profits and it sickens me. Yeah, I feel sick um, that they're doing this and my daughter's up there on pharmaceuticals and I have to jump hoops now to get legal cannabis. What would you do if it was one of your kids? And it could be. Epilepsy, just epilepsy can strike you or anybody at any time can have a seizure. If the Premier of Queensland had a daughter like we've got, she wouldn't be in the position she's in because she couldn't be. She would be like us. I have no choice. I would definitely give my kids uh, cannabis oil um, before chemotherapy. If my child had epileptic fits or anything that would relieve it um, with medical ca cannabis, I would definitely give it to him. I would try medical cannabis um, if it's going to help me. Like if I had a problem, then you know I'd rather be healthy. I guess I would consider anything that was at at my disposal uh, from a legal standpoint. I myself have used it for medical reasons, and you know, and and have have had great um, therapy from it. If it was prescribed by a doctor, yes, I would. Yes, I would use it if I had a medical issue, yeah, definitely. If I did get in a bad way, I would definitely try it. I wouldn't hesitate to have it, yeah. I have kids, I have grandchildren. If they needed it and it would help them, I would want them to have it and I would assist in letting them have it. Break a law to save a life and a lot of parents would do it and that's why we do it. We do it to bring joy to our son. We give him a quality of life. It's my son's best interest that he has this cannabis. Uh, it gives him uh, days or weeks without seizures. You know, my son has never, ever been seizure free, ever, even on three to four different medications from some pharmaceutical companies. So yeah, it's not breaking the law to me. They broke the law by not allowing us to use that first. Nothing's happening. We need to get the word out there and a lot more people need to educate themselves on cannabis medicine and everyone who, who is using it for medical use, don't be afraid of prosecution. Come out, c come on camera, go even on Facebook, tell everyone you're using it. Don't be scared of prosecution. The more people who comes out and tells everyone they're using it, I'm sure cannabis would have already been legalised by now. Come out publicly just because of it. I know a lot of parents that can't because of their circumstances with being a single parent and they're scared, yes. Um, I've come out to save kids. Like, I look at my son and I couldn't imagine any other person having to deal with that or a child in another body like that hurting that much. So, yeah, I come out to tell people, you know, I'm not profiting off any of this. You know, I do get a bit of followers that do help me with my son's organic feeds and help me donate to me to pay for these organic foods and you know the Church of Ubuntu is a life for free for me you know they they've seen my son change and they know it's helping him so they have like it's not that they have to they know that this is the right thing to do um, so I come out to tell other people don't be scared you know your son or your daughter or your loved ones more important than the, the law itself having to deal with your, your spouse dying, like your loved one dying, like, no, like that's why I come out, because I'm watching him die and there's a lot of other out there that could benefit 100% from the cannabis. They have to understand that the stress that this sort of thing puts, puts on a family, like, um, it's hard to be in a hospital and watch your child seizuring, knowing that they can't stop the seizures and that those medications are causing your daughter harm. And you have a product that could possibly help, 
but you're not allowed to use it. And that product does no harm. Here they said to um, get rid of the oils um, and they will call the police if, if they see it or if I, t if I was to administer it to her. Around June, July last year, she was intubated or on a respirator twice in a period of three weeks. Because, basically, because of the hospital wouldn't allow us to give her the her cannabis oil in the hospital. It becomes, in a way, dangerous for her to go to hospital because we can't give her the oil in the hospital. So we need something now. For some people, not having a supply means that they'll die. For some people, it means that they'll go back to being in horrific pain and suffering and <clears throat> will have to go back to using their pharmaceutical medications. Basically, for all of them, it means they'll go back to suffering again. Chase has um, always been seizuring since birth and my daughter was one and a half when it all happened and um, I think I'm blessed to have her because a lot of children aren't like her. She's a special kid, that one. Um, she's really careful, caring for her, child, her, her brother. She always watches him, holds his hand. Um, she's always watching him seizure so she knows what a seizure looks like. She's pretty much on like a second mum to him. She's, she's even said to me the other day that she wanted to become a carer because no one else looks after kids like Chase as good as she would. Um, she's a very, she's got a heart of gold I guess. Like I have no idea what it would be like to watch your brother seizure but I do know as a, as a parent and it sucks so I could just imagine her and what she feels. And she used to come home from daycare and this is at when she was two and a half, she's very smart. Um, used to come home and say, is Chasey still alive? As you know, she knows that he could pass throughout the day. But now she's, she's more scared of services taking Chase and she'd lock her door now. You know, she says that she goes to lock her door so they don't come in and take Chase. He waves now and sometimes he smiles. My son literally thrives on this medication, thrives on cannabis and he our family thrives watching him. So it just brings us all together and that's why we need it. The general public need to stand up and stand up. <laughs> they need to stand up. They need to um, show that they support cannabis. They need to stop living in fear that people will find out that they're using cannabis or that they support cannabis. We need to start taking that stigma away from it, um, that it's a bad drug, that it's a horrible drug, and we need to prove that it's not. We need to prove that good, decent people support cannabis. Um, and once we do that, then we might start changing the perception and the stigma that surrounds it. They're scaring parents, which is very unfair. Um, our kids need it and our families need it. I want them to answer, what am I supposed to do? Who am I hurting? And that's the question I say, who are we hurting? We're not hurting our child, not hurting you, not hurting anybody else. Who are we hurting? Nobody. We're helping our child. If police came here to arrest me, they wouldn't arrest me unless they took my daughter with me because I'm not leaving Caitlin's side. And if it came down to it, I, I would kill if I had to, because my daughter means the world to me. I'd move mountains for my daughter. I have fought that hard, giving my daughter CPR to keep her alive. I'm not going to let anyone come in and stop me. There's no way in the world. My, my daughter's, she's got a quality of life. She is living proof cannabis medicine works. She has been living proof for two years. Enough's enough. The last time I ran out of cannabis, I gave her CPR for 15 minutes. Oh. Imagine this was your grandson, Jack. Yeah. Please, I need an amnesty. Mm. Well, <laughs> it's well, not a joke. But this, this, so you, this, this is a, the, from a federal point of view, from our point of view. But I've spoke to is... Greg Hunt. I've had meetings yeah. with Greg Hunt. I had him in tears yeah. when I showed him the CPR video. Okay. I've spoke to Bill Turner on the phone and their hands are tied. It's up to the state. But yeah. I'm not getting anywhere. I've met okay. Anastasia Palaszczuk twice. So I'm not getting anywhere. Well. I, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will, I will get in touch with Anastasia and Thank I'll you. raise this case for you. Thank you. Can, uh, I I leave a, can I leave a letter with you? Like, yeah, you do I that. haven't hit anything for, for three years. My whole no. Facebook's public. It's got me yeah, giving her CPR for 15 minutes. Everything. I'm just okay. I'm well, getting Katrina, anywhere. I will, um, I, will, I will raise this with, I'll raise this with the Premier 
It yeah. is, as you say, it's a state. It is a state issue. Sure. But from a federal point of view, we've uh, we've made you know uh, the legal for medicinal cannabis to come into the country. We've licensed people to grow it in Australia, and there will be Australian-grown medicinal but cannabis is, products available this later this This is the predicament year. I'm in. The head Lord of drug Darling. control knows okay. I make the cannabis. Yeah. I'm at the stage The Jenny Hallam in South Australia got mm. raided. I make it for my daughter. I'm a single mother with four kids. I shouldn't mm. have to be in that circumstance. No. Where's the jelly? It's a tonic, lots of tonic. Baby girl, sweetheart. Okay, I'm like, sweetheart. Oh. Bella, 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 sweetheart. <laughs> For the dawn, the angels of the wind know it's fight or flight. While the angels here on earth flip the switch to autopilot. all around us and our blood leaks red water is life no one can raise the dead no not even you and the angels of the wind know it's fight or flight and the angels of the earth just flip Auto